Hello. Hello, brothers. The ice is melting here. The ice is melting. Ice is melting. Yep. How how are y'all doing today? Praise the Lord. Okay. All right. Try to get what, Mom? Okay. We're sending the picture. You have the group. And we're still frozen. Okay. Uh. Oh man, come on. Why is it not working? Hold on, I'm trying to get this thing to work. Why is it not working? Oh, okay, I got it, I got it. Why is that not working? Oh, oh well, 11 o'clock. I'll have to play with this another time then. Da da da. Okay, I'm going to put this on speaker so I can hear you. All right, who wants to fin who wants to open, who wants to close? Okay, who wants to open? Okay, I'll open. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for this day. Thank you for this time. Uh, thank you for uh, this blessing uh, to lift up our prayers in Jesus' name to you, Father God, and your Holy Spirit. Um, that spirit of truth and of wisdom and of grace and understanding and of prophecy and of many great things. Father God, thank you for... Uh, Dan, and for Joseph, and for Kia, and for this opportunity to share in baseball and finish our Bible class from yesterday. Uh, thank you for the opportunity to share in the wisdom that you've uh, written to us and have spoken to your uh, your children here. Uh, Lord Jesus, thank you for um, the work that you have shown us, uh, the words that begin that work that we are to do after believing in you and calling on your name, whether it be in English or Hebrew or Korean uh, or whatever language it is. Uh, Father God, thank you for your spirit that indwells the living temples um, of God, that being anyone that's alive, and for those that you have blessed by faith and have blessed with grace and blessed with truth and, you know, even blessed with just air and water and everyday necessities. Lord Jesus, thank you for Matthew 13, for being a predecessor to our homework assignments for the rest of this class, uh, as being a group of soils or hearts or buckets that we'll be able to analyze and critique and learn and discern and judge and impart grace and opportunity in how to share with people in our everyday lives and for protecting myself at 138 or 225, however you want to look at it, however we want to look at it, because we know you know everything and see everything and hear everything. And we're thankful for you being the Lord, our God, our Alpha, and our Omega. And it's your name that we pray and ask these things because we love you and because we believe in you, Lord Jesus. Amen. 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 All right. So uh, I didn't get to, to 
kind of finish that homework assignment. Did y'all see the, the homework page that I gave you for Monday, what y'all have to write up? Yeah. You did? Fabian, I know you saw it. Yes. Dan, did, uh, did, do you have any... Um, Dan, did you see the questions? No. Do y'all have any questions about it? Simple enough? Which questions? The ones that are for Monday to turn in by Monday. Okay, so it's in a PDF and a Word file. Yeah, it's in a PDF and a, and a Word file. Um, I will. Yeah, if if you if you go back, it's a PDF and a and a Word file. Um, I'm assuming so. The the questions are are fairly uh, simple and straightforward. Um, do y'all have any questions, Joseph or Fabian? Do you have any questions about them, or they're pretty straightforward? Okay. Do you under you understand? Uh, okay. Well, if you have questions, you let me know how to to do it. Okay. But they're they're yeah. Okay. So. Other than that, uh, we're going to do Samson here. So, finish it up. So, Brother Joseph, uh, I believe you have the floor, correct? Yes. All right. Amen. Uh, if the rest of y'all would like to mute your phone until Joseph is finished, then we will be good to start. Yeah, let me. I'm looking for it too. Okay, here it is. I'll put it back at the. Uh, yeah, I just put it in a group at the very bottom, right now. All right, there you go. Jews are welcome. You know, when I say that, I always say Jews are welcome. And you know, usually it, over here they make fun of uh, the Hispanics because you know they have a different accent in America, and America likes to make fun of a lot of people. So over here, Mexican Americans or Mexicans tend to have these accents that they make fun of a lot. So when you say the word you, when you say the word you, they usually say uh, you, you or or chu or something like that. So I like to turn around and say, you know what, Jews are welcome because I'm not really saying you, I'm saying Jews. Jews are welcome because they've been given the promise by Abraham. They've been given the promise by uh, Jacob as well. Uh, they've been given the promise by God that if you bless them. You'll be blessed, and if you curse them, you will be cursed. So Jews are welcome, because Jews are welcome. Because without the Jews, Jesus would not have come through. And then that kind of gets into a whole topic like I was explaining to my mom. Um, there's a story. I know you guys won't know it. Um, well, you might know it, but n not really. But basically, the, the bloodlines and the royal lines of Jesus were taken all the way down to one person by the devil. Now, it wasn't necessarily the devil that personally did it, but it was the devil that indwelt a grandma that killed all her children, or all the children of the bloodline, all the way down to one little king who got away. But that's an Old Testament story. Most people don't know it because it's one of those things, like when you ask me about Dinah and why I love the quick Bible, which we're going to have to get you and Fabian on it because it helps out a lot. Um, especially when you're switching between languages um, and for quick searching because you just take the Bible and you type in one word and you can see how many times it comes up. So uh, Dinah, Dina, however you want to pronounce it, um, since you had asked that question, is a very difficult story. It is probably not a story that the parents really heard before they named their children that. So... It's one of those stories. 
not a very it's a not a very uplifting story, but it is a story about God's mercy and God's grace and God's righteousness and God's holiness and then God's discipline and judgment at the same time. So it is a difficult story uh, if they have not been prepared to listen to it. But anyway, with that being said, uh, on to Samson. Also, if, just in case you didn't go through it. You're doing, you're doing dance, right? Yes. Okay, got it. Alcohol 
not to even touch anything unclean according to the Jewish culture and never to shave his hair. The main reason of all this was because Samson's birth was to deliver Israel from the hands of the Philistines. Mm-hmm. Um, Amen. Um, you still there, brother? Hello, hello, hello. Kia? Yes, bro. Alright, continuing on. Samson Continuing on, um, Samson intended to marry a Felician girl and whose name was not indicated in the Bible, whom later was instead given to, um, to one of Samson's companions, that is Judges 14 and verse 20. But remember, it was all part of the plan, that is Judges 14 verse 4. And it worked because Samson got so annoyed that he had, he, he started killing the Philistines and, and they also wanted him dead. So they sent him another lady called Delilah, whom Samson fell for, yet it was a trap from the Philistines because they wondered where he got his strength from. So Delilah seduced Samson until one day he told her the truth that the secret was in, in the hair. One day she put him to sleep, shaved off, his, shaved off his hair, and all the strength was gone. He was put to prison, plucked off his eyes, but the Bible states that his hair started to grow again. That is Judges 16, verse 22. So one day, as the old rulers of the Philistines had gathered, ate, and drank, that they asked to be entertained by Samson, that they brought him from the prison, laughed at him, mocked him, among many other insults, that he asked God to give him his strength back just for one time, which God did, and Samson pushed the two pillars that were holding the entire building they were in that the building collapsed and no one survived, not even Samson himself. But he's in heaven with with our Father God and our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Um to add to, to, to add something here, um I, I, I thank brother um, brother Dan for the good memory he had he has that he managed to put these things together without looking in the Bible. That's uh, that's a good thing. However, Amen. Amen. Thank you. <laughs> yes. And um, however, even me myself, I when I was um, marking this paper, I, I I went in the Bible and I even saw some other things that I I I that, that stood out. Something like we see. Um, we can, if we use our own money's understanding, you can condemn Samson. You can, uh, you can, you can think he, he is a bad person. He he rebelled against God. He did all the all, all things that he was not supposed to do. But when I was following, I read you know, uh, Judges fourteen and verses four. Taking me back from the time he saw this girl, the first girl that was intending to marry. And this is what the Bible says. But his father and mother did not know that it was of the Lord, that he was seeking an occasion to move against the Philistines. For at that time, the Philistines had, dom had a dominion over Israel. That is why I, I wrote up in the commentary that it was all part of the plan. And I examined Samson's life from when he was young, from when he was the, the mother was told by the angel of the Lord from conception that the mother was not supposed to drink any intoxicating drink. Amen. Was not supposed to touch anything and him. Was not, and when the baby is out, he, so Samson was not even to take these things from the mother's womb. That means he grew up, um, uh, 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 he grew up an obedient person, like an obedient young man who would listen to his parents because these instructions were given to the mother, which mother later went and told 
Samson's father, the husband. And they might have brought Samson in a God-fearing way because that is the only way by that time since the Ten Commandments had been given in Exodus 20. So they came following. So they must have been, this man would have been a, a young man obedient to the parents and because and, at this time he had not done any of that. But he fell for a Philistian. And I see up here when he tells the parents, the father is like, haven't you found any girls in, in, in your in your fellow tribes brethren can't you find a girl here but he insists that it is the other one that makes him happy so you see that the goddess plan is now starting to work because if they had nothing to connect the Philistines and in some sort something to disagree on God's purpose will not come to pass. And it takes me to how my brother has helped me to look always at the things that are not normally seen when you're reading a text in the Bible. I'm uh, meaning Brother Cruz, not a Patrick. Not a Pasoma Patrick, Brother Cruz. Like, I remember now when I reached this verse, I remembered Isaac when he was about to bless. Uh, 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 when he was uh, when about to bless uh, Jacob and Esau, and I imagined if this man's sight was 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 to be perfect, he would go against God's will. It is why God decides to take his sight, and now he has to just feel that the that Jacob's mother give uh, advise him on how to do so that he can do God's will. So it is the same thing here. Um, Samson goes in the arrival um, nation to pick a girl in order to get uh, a misunderstanding between the two so that he, he, he centers on that to revenge unto them for God's purpose. And we see it happening that when the parents uh, go to meet the, the Philistines, they find uh, a lion on the way kills the lion and keeps quiet. Later on, he finds um, the honey and he eats it, but does not tell anyone. And the girl is, is, is killed. He gets angry. He goes to revenge and kills some of the Philistines. And he falls in love with the Lila. The Lila is also persuaded to, to ask for the secret which he fell for. And later on, we see him imprisoned. He was imprisoned and later he is brought into the, the temple of uh, these gods of the Philistines. And when these guys are drunk, are uh, full, they ask to be entertained by this mighty man of God that later signed up their judgment. So all in all, when I follow this, uh, this story, I see God's work. Even in myself, I reflected the story to my own life. Um, last time I was home and I looked at the people I grew up with, um, my, my young brother Patrick, I met some people I started with, some were way younger than me. And I look at the kind of life they are living right now and I look at the, the kind of a setback that I got that I have, I'm in Toronto right now, when they're in Kampala, they have life going on, everything seems to be fine, and I'm like, God, what, what did I do wrong to be here? But now I remember when I read verse 4 of chapter 14 of Judges, that it is all God is, it is part of God's plan for me. To do God's purpose of which He made me. For I know Amen. each one of us, Amen. each one of us was created for a purpose. And there is nothing you can do about it. You will fulfill it. Knowing or unknowing, just like Samson did. Amen. You can look at him in this perspective and you think he wasn't, but if you understand, you look at the other information that is not normally seen, just like any other scripture or any other Bible story, it is really blessing to know that I'm also more like the 
the will of God, regardless of, regardless if I know it or I don't. So I, I give the glory and the honor back to Him. Thank you so much. Amen. 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 Thank you, Joseph. Dan, Fabian, questions, thoughts, comments. I just appreciate Brother Joseph for the commentary. Yes, uh, thank you so much. And uh, for the thing that you identified. Yes. Thank you. Fabian? Any thoughts or comments? Uh, not, not one. Not, uh, I don't have a lot of things to say because what Brother Kia said is good and I really appreciate it. So, that's uh, what I, I can say to that. All right. Well, uh, well, amen. All right. Well, I, uh, I think that was very good, Joseph. Uh, yeah, excellent point. The Dan actually has quite a memory. That's a very true statement. I, uh, I noticed that too. I think it's, uh, that verse that you were reading there in Judges, uh, 14, 4. Uh, excellent point about however his father and mother did not know that it was the Lord, that it was of the Lord, for he was asking on an occasion against the Philistines. Now at that time, the Philistines were ruling over Israel. So. Um, it's definitely uh, a blessed thing uh, when we take in the word that the more that we look at it, the more that we examine it, the more that we spend time with it, the more that we spend time with God, with Jesus and with his spirit inside of us working, uh, we will see him more and more and see those events and actions taking place uh, in the lives of uh, one another uh, and be able to uh, have a heart and a desire and a passion and a spirit to reach out to the lost and, and share with the saved and, um, uh, bless one another, uh, whether we're Christians and also bless one another, whether they're not Christians, uh, probably in a slightly different way. But, uh, the Lord is good in all these things and it's always a very good thing to take a broad perspective and to try to tie these stories into real life events. Uh, particularly it is, um, one to think about how has God used this story in your life, uh, in some way, shape or form. Uh, to affect you and to draw you. And then eventually when you are drawn by the spirit, which is, this is the point of these, uh, classes and testimonies and papers and observations and commentary and sharing this, this love that the Lord has put into our hearts, uh, to love him and to love one another, um, in the words that we take in in the words that we will also give out as we put them inside of us because out of the abundance of the heart speaks the mouth and so be it so what you take in if this was a secular way is like what you take in is what you're going to put out so if you take in good things good things will come out if you take in good word good works will come out and we will be surprised uh, at times, uh, other times less surprised, uh, to see the reward or the blessing that follows, um, and to see the grace and the work of our Lord, um, using us as his vessel, as, as, uh, his clay, um, as his sheep, um, that much like when, um, we talked with Dan and you guys and, or actually when I was talking with your brother, Joseph, uh, that in Swahili, that even the sheep go ba ba ba, which is Swahili for father, Abba Father. So, so even the sheep and the heavens declare, and the rocks and the trees will <laughs> ba ba ba, which is my nickname in baseball. Yeah, that is my my nickname in baseball, B A B A, which is Swahili. <laughs> yes. So my father was a coach 
And since today is coaching day, um, I figure I would transition to that because my, my, my dad wanted me to be special. You know, he wanted me to be a little Samson and stuff, you know, and, uh, and I was one of those obedient kids. Uh, definitely, but then when your heart gets captured by something that maybe you weren't prepared for, you know, and didn't have, I didn't take in a good form of faith, and I fell like uh, Samson here. Not exactly like him. I didn't lose my eyes, but I lost my spiritual eyes. I didn't know how to see the world. And I didn't treat the way the world, the, the way that the Lord wanted me to treat the world. And at the same time, I reaped what I sow. But his grace was merciful and kind. And, you know, he didn't take me out at 138 or 225, since we know what that means, you know, now by that other picture. But, um, um, yes, there, there is a purpose for everything. And we know that God causes all things, that means good things and that means bad things, to work together for good, for those who love God, according to His purpose. Sometimes we know His purpose, sometimes we don't know His purpose. And if we don't know His purpose, then look for a Bible verse, look for a scripture that's going to support the purpose that you're working for. You know, again, this is not a salvation thing, this is about sanctification. Sanctification is the cutting away at your flesh. So when we have trials and when we have tribulations, we use those trials and we use those tribulations, especially now as uh, as Christians, as being born again, as being saved, to cut away at our own flesh. And as the Lord continues to reduce our problems from within ourselves, and our problems really don't, they're really not generated by ourselves as much as before we were born again. Um, we'll notice that we get better at sharing the word with others and doing good things for others in the hope to share that word too, so that the Lord will bless them the way that he has blessed um, us and other Christians and other brothers that have been at this point where we are now and today and will continue going forward. To be good Christian soldiers, as Paul would write in a couple places, to put on our armor of God, to put on our helmet of salvation, because with our mouth we confess that he is our Lord, and we put that helmet on. And when we believe in our heart that he was raised from the dead, the scripture says there that we are, we by believing it results in our righteousness, and by confessing our mouth it results in our salvation. Romans 10, uh, 14, I think. Uh, no, uh, 10 or 11. 10, 10 or 10, 11. Somewhere right there. And by doing that and believing in our heart that he was raised from the dead, we will be saved. Meaning we will put on our breastplate of righteousness and go back out to the battlefield, the, the, the mission field. Uh, the field that uh, has a lot of dirt in it. And it's the reason why I love Matthew 13 when I read it later, uh, after reading 5 and 7 and then 10 and then somewhere getting born again, somewhere in that area there when I was reading it and understanding it and growing in it, uh, that Matthew 13 would teach us about the hearts of men, um, which is the the set of glasses, the lenses, um that uh, I would like to use for the majority of the homework from this point going forward, that when you examine the story, now that we've all taken a little look at it, we've all commented on, we've all uh, let God's Holy Spirit uh, work in, in, in our sharing here uh, of our faith that now comes from hearing the word and from hearing one another agree on the things. I don't think we really have much disagreement here, which is the point of this, that we become one body, one mind, one spirit, wearing the same helmet of salvation, wearing the same breastplate of righteousness, wearing the same shoes of peace that we share with one another, that all are tied together by that belt of truth that brings and buckles everything tight. Because Dan, Fabian, you guys are baseball guys. Do you wear a baseball belt usually for your baseball uniform? Yes. When when you're coaching or when you're playing baseball, when you're younger, assuming you have a belt, knowing that we should have a belt, <laughs> um, did you wear a belt when you played baseball if you had a belt? Uh, when I 
yes, yes. Yes, because if you don't wear a belt, what happens? Your pants fall off. It's right. Amen. <laughs> Brother Joseph, when you're preaching, do you wear a belt usually? I think you normally do. Yeah, I do. Because if you don't wear a belt, what happens? Things are a little loose. They're not tight. They're not ready to go to war. They're not ready to preach. They're not ready to do a good work. So that's why the belt of truth gives us, it ties everything together. Because even if we have a desire to do all these things, but we don't have the truth, the right truth, the truth that comes from God's word, that comes from the way, the truth, and the life, that comes from the Holy Spirit of truth, that glorifies our Father in heaven, it's not going to be too good. So that's why um, we love our belt of truth. And once we have everything tied together, the Lord gives us that sword of the Spirit that probably brought us this way. And now we get to use that sword, that sword, that sword of the Spirit, that sword of the Alpha and the Omega that hopefully you guys had an enjoyable study this morning on. Um, look forward to hearing a little yeah. bit of when it, whenever y'all have time and, uh, and put on our shield of faith. In other words, we're going to keep adding to our armor by adding more and more faith so that we can share, share with others because, you know, it's one of those things that, you know, men are, are drawn to certain things and, you know, people that, that are soldiers, they tend to have a great respect in the community. Um, um, would you all agree or disagree that people take uh, great respect or have more respect generally because they wear the uniform? They have a certain level of respect. Now, what they do with it, that's a different story. We're using it in a holy way, not in an unholy way. So the point is, is that it draws people to them normally because they know, as it's written, that, that those that have been given authority, you know, are called ministers, like the chapter Rose of Romans 13, where the government and the authorities and the officials, you know, are minister for God, enacting righteousness and, and, and you know, repaying unrighteousness with uh, <laughs> the judgment that's due for their due penalty and stuff like that. So that's why um, when we go out as Christian soldiers, that we're not... We're not doing it to seek respect for ourselves, but it is given by others. But honor is much more valuable to know that we are fighting for them and for their souls, whether they know it or whether they don't know it. And if we know that they are our brothers and sisters and we are there to love one another and share with one another and defend one another when the time arises and comes, and that's why it's good to go out in pairs because... Uh, I'm sure, Brother Joseph, you, you've been out by yourself, and you've been out with pairs, uh, like y'all went on a mission trip to Tanzania. Um, in your opinion, that you have more experience with this, is it easier to do it in pairs or by yourself? No, uh, it is easier when you're in a pair. I agree, because when one stumbles, the other one's there to help pick up or step in or say a word when maybe they might have a question. And it's one of the very good things that we learn uh, throughout the scriptures when we apply what we read and take in that faith that fills our heart so that it'll return back out through our vessels and through our body and through our word. That they are no longer our words to speak, but it's the Lord that speaks through us as his vessels for honor and not his vessels for dishonor. So, with that being said, do you all have any questions or commentary before we move on to coaching for the remaining time that we have? No, it's good to I like the example you bring out. It's very rich for me. Yes. Amen. And the same way will work out in the field. So hopefully the Lord will send you an assistant coach to help you with your program eventually, you know, sometime in the future. Or maybe you have a mentor that you can help when you go out looking for children as well. Um, it's a very good thing too. So keep it in mind. Um, other than that, uh, yeah. So good to go. All right. Well, since it's baseball day and we have coaching, um, what can I say? Let me, add, let me start with this. 
Uh, Fabian, and Dan, what did y'all talk about in your, uh, in your, uh, in your, uh, baseball day this week on, uh, Thursday, yesterday, I think. What did y'all talk about? Yes, we are talking about, uh, George Mann and who. So, he and what have done, we have changed about, uh, uh, he took, uh, a lot of examples for show me how it happened, what is uh, George Mack, I say, like, uh, strike out that uh, the, the coach or the players don't have to argue this. But uh, when, uh, for example, if uh, if he calls, uh, if it's like, Coach can see if uh, it is a height to we'll put the call in the flight. Or, mm-hmm. um, yes, uh, uh, what can I say? So, you want to tell me that uh, there is a rule in a rule and the, the, the coach can see if the, the umpire used the rule correctly or badly. But for a judgment, no. All right. No, yes. yes. Amen. Amen. Well, thank you for that. Now, Joseph and Fabian, Joseph particularly, uh, how did y'all's conversation about uh, baseball go the other day? What did you learn, Joseph? Um, I, uh, I, it was uh, my first time to to hear much about the game and I didn't know how many people are supposed to be on the field so now I know there are nine each team on the field Amen Mm -hmm. and And I didn't know also who who is is who the, the numbers like in soccer we have numbers and uh Brother Fabian helped me uh, to know the, the people that are supposed to be on the field. There is the pitcher, I was always hearing, and then the catcher, and then there is the first base, the third base, the second base, all these people. And, and uh, the intention of, or the intention of the, of this man, how do you call him again? He has gone. So, uh, it, it is a, it is a uh, funny game, that, like the one, this man who's supposed to hit the ball, that one, how they call him? The batter. Ah, uh, uh, that man. Uh, so, it is, uh, yes, it is, a, it is a funny game for someone to have the ball, actually it is the opposite really. so the one with the ball is the one to, to is, is, is the one is the one attacking, and yet it's no. the opposite vegetables. No, I don't remember the one. I don't remember. Yeah, the the guy, the pitcher, pitcher is on this defense team. That's what I try to tell. I tell you. Uh, yes. The, yes. The guy with bat is mm. on attack. Yes. Yes. Then the opposite team. Yeah. A lot of in the in the middle. One who is willing to to hit the ball and. Yes, in in baseball, basically you have a defensive team and you have the offensive team. The offensive team is the team that has the bat in the hand. It's like cricket. You know cricket? Yes. Yeah. Uh, yes, for us. Okay, well. Um, I, 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 I didn't know the details. Yeah, so, oh. so with baseball, uh, yes. I want to ask a question in cricket and baseball. Which one is the first? Uh, cricket. So, yeah, okay, so baseball comes from cricket. Uh, maybe, yeah. Yeah, everything probably goes everywhere. So, um, potentially, potentially. So, um, there is a, uh, video that I just sent. Um, it doesn't, I don't think it takes too much data because it's a YouTube video and it's a small one, I believe. I sent it to the group and basically this kind of gives you a simple way of, um, of watching it. It's about three minutes long 
Uh, can all of you watch YouTube right now, and we can watch it together, and then, Joseph, you'll see a little bit. It's a secular guy. It's not a Christian guy, but there, there's no cuss words or anything like that in it, but it'll explain it kind of in a very simple style, and then, uh, can y'all watch the YouTube video, uh, right now? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, so when everyone has it ready to watch, and we can all push play... We'll all push play together. So. Okay. Um, there. Okay. Who, uh, who else is ready? It's three minutes and 22 uh, seconds. There is a lot of. They wrote the song for Bessemer. They wrote the song for Bessemer. Yes. Yeah. Okay. The song for Bessemer. Three minutes and 22 seconds. Yes. Right? Yes. All right, so we'll push play and uh, on zero. So three. My phone is my phone is saying invalid response. Let me try. Okay. Also same here. Invalid response. Yeah. Oh okay. Yeah. Oh okay. Well, you'll get Homer. You can do it on your own then. So I'll just play it real quick. You can hear it. And then I'll get back to it. So here we go. Ready? I'll play it. You listen. Is well. Let's see. I could do a vid. No, I can't do a video. Okay. So um, I'll just push play. You could listen. So here we go. All right, there we go. Simple enough. Well, he used the word karma. So, do you think he's a Christian or not? <laughs> no chance. Yeah, pretty much. So, but you know what? We can learn from our friends slash enemies uh, and those that you know take courage, write them a Christian note, and thank them for their stuff, and share some good Christian stuff with those that are you know not believers and stuff, or you might have any doubts and stuff like that. But the point is. Um, it's a nice little video. It kind of gives you the basics. When you have the ball, it is when you have the ball and you're on the mound. In baseball, they call it throwing the rock. You know, they call it throwing the rock. It's called throwing the pitch. The pitcher pitches the ball. The batter hits the ball. They got around the bases. Whoever has the most runs, uh, which is a runner that makes it all the way around all four bases and makes it to home before there are three outs, you get. Well, we don't call it a point, but it, you get a point. It's a it's a run. It's called a run in baseball. So baseball kind of has its own terminology, just like Christianity has its own terminology. It takes a bunch of words in their English language and it uses them with a very specific intent. Um, it's one of the very few games that when you have the ball, you are playing defense. When you have the bat and do not have the ball, you are playing offense most games work the other way and why we love this game so much because it's just not like the rest of the games it is man against man and the lord works in all things and it's quite fun to see how when you start reading rule books it's very much like reading the bible and it's probably one of the things that helped me read the bible when i was a kid is that i read these rule books because my father when he coached me made me read the rule book of uh, baseball so that I'd understand the rules. Of course, I don't really want to, but I did it because I was an obedient child, you know, to the day I decided to let my hair get cut <laughs> or or start drinking or, or you know, touch things that are dead that you shouldn't touch, you know, like Samson and stuff. But um, these are this is one of those things and stuff. So there's a lot of nuances and little things 
that I will say this, that I love the story of Rahab in particular and why I, I love uh, a baseball itself because it can, things as we can see can have much deeper meanings than we see on the surfaces and they can be used with whether you eat or drink or whatever you do, do all to the glory of God. So the point of this is how can we glorify God in this little game that he's given us to draw people in uh, to have a desire to want to know us or, or uh, you know, to, to respect us, honor us, like us, love us for something that we've been gifted by the Lord. So, for instance, um, David, what was something physical that he was good at? Play this uh, musical instrument. It's called what? Yes, uh, the harp or flute or lute, whatever it was. Yeah, a musical uh, instrument. Uh -huh. He was gifted by God, uh -huh. and people liked him for that gift. And people were drawn by the gift that God gave him to play music. Uh, in Dan and Fabian's case, they were drawn to him because they. They, he's given them a gift to love the game of baseball and they, you know, they no longer have it as an idol and they have the Lord in the right place for sure now. Not, not that to say they didn't, but lots of people have lots of idols in different places and God will put someone somewhere in that something or something or place or whatever that's probably going to be a Christian. So with whatever you do, even if it's in the slums, you're going to find some Christian in there to bear witness to the truth and why we're called to be witnesses. You know, we're, we're called to be witnesses in whatever gift that God has given to us. Because in the day of judgment, maybe, I don't know it, but we're called witnesses because the Lord will say, hey, do you remember when you were at this event in that time that God's going to bring those witnesses that guy that knocked on the door, that guy that spoke about Jesus, that guy, that guy, that guy, because, you know, we're either a testimony for the person or we're a testimony against that person. Not that we are judging them, but that we are trying to share what the Lord has done to us and that he will judge everyone one day. And you want to believe before the day you die. So God gives us these little talents that allows us to move up the ranks of that particular secular world. Um, Joseph moved up the to the position he was because he could, God gave him the answer to dreams and the pharaohs could appreciate it. David uh, used his musical abilities to draw people to like him and stuff. Doesn't help that he's not bad looking either from what I sell, but, you know, it just kind of helps him with... Uh, gain a certain amount of respect or, or honor that you can turn around and you can give that honor and that glory to the Lord. So the point of the story is don't touch the glory. Pass it on to Jesus. Pass it on to God because that's where it goes. But when it comes through you, turn around and point to God. Be the spotlight. You know, be the spotlight to the Lord, you know, and forward it on. It would be like Moses. You know, they asked Moses in the New Testament, you know, are are you uh, are you from our fa are you older than our father Abraham? Are you greater than Moses? Well, if you had believed in them, then you would believe also in in me. Thus says Jesus, because all they were were spotlights that continued that the Lord used to push them and point them to Christ. You know, full, in a fully revealed way, but to push them to God, to push them to the Lord in the right way, and not take credit or glory for it. But if they did, they got penalized, and you don't want to do that. <laughs> so, so, um, so with with uh, with baseball in this case, you know, um, I know Kia has some great gifts physically. I know he loves volleyball and stuff. So, you know, but apparently he knows a little bit about soccer. I don't know, but it'll be one of those things that whenever you know he has a church or something, there's got to be something to entertain the kids as well, to help draw them in and 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 and. Let them glorify God, too, in all the things that they do. So um, even that these rich people that make millions and millions of dollars in America with, with whatever sport it is, there are some Christians, albeit they're the Samsons of the group, 
you know what? They are the Samsons up there, and Samson had a gift to be strong and to do all those things. So our point of this is that as a coach, our job is to train them, to teach them, to grow them, not just in the game of baseball, but into how to glorify the Lord through this particular game, whether it's praying together, sharing the gospel in the dugouts, sharing the gospel in the in practice, before, after, some way, somehow, glorifying him all do, and he'll give you your heart's desire. I know that Dan and Fabian have a great heart's desire for baseball. I have a great heart's desire. Yes, go ahead, Dan. Hello? Go ahead, coach. Yes, I can't wait. Yes, thank you. I can't I, I do not want to wait so long before I share with you. Go ahead. Experience. Take over. Yeah. Uh, thank you. Yes, uh, today we had to spray in softball the girls and uh, joined by our lady boss because she also does soft coaching. She hasn't been here for a while. And uh, on her coming, she was too early for the session because we had changed it one hour later after another practice, so I was at a field without uh, the girls. We sat there and uh, we started up conversations that ended up into Bible talk, Bible readings, and uh, it's really a testimony that I told her, that it's a testimony for me to know uh, your, faith, your faith. Yes. So we also shared with her uh, about Samson's story. I thought I would write everything in the TNT, uh -huh. but I think this is the best time to uh, share it now. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yeah, so we share about Samson on uh, her star, whether she knows how to go to heaven, uh, why it requires for one to go to heaven, and, and I was very happy when uh, she emphasized Romans 10, 8, 9, 8 to 13, and uh, I asked her about the good works, to know what she thinks about the good works, and uh, yeah, she was in a good understanding, and uh, she also emphasized that uh, she can't buy her way through it, because I tried to now with questions in that line. Um, we read a lot, uh, we read uh, much of the Psalms, uh, Psalms 50, 51, Psalms 51, uh, uh, verse 16, if I'm remembering well, uh, and we also read... It's a very, very good experience. Uh, so it's a, uh, it's God's uh, making, uh, and it's God's timing uh, that makes us uh, do these good things. Yes, it's pretty distant. Uh, we talked a lot. Yes, I just wanted to know. Yeah, it, it was very blessing. Amen. Yeah. Uh, yes. And uh, one verse that you may not know sometimes when. Uh, because we are all gifted, and uh, when you think you're mighty and yeah, you're on top, you never know, just like Samson, that the Lord had already parted from you. So always you have to keep in the Lord, and you have to keep righteous. And uh, when you go back to your previous uh, groupings, try not to. You can associate, but uh, you have to distinguish yourself from their practices. And always condemn when they do wrong. Otherwise, uh, they could have scripture. What we read was saying that if you comply with them, then uh, like a sinful and unrighteous. We read like our uh, three scriptures. Yes. Amen. You know, she's a lady and uh, sharing uh, with her uh, almost one hour for the blessing. Yes. Thank you. Amen. Well, praise the Lord. And I got down people. <laughs> you also told them videos and I had to explain the whole video star. Yeah, it was really nice. Well, good. Amen. Amen. Well, that's a blessing. Okay. Well, we'll pray for boss lady and stuff, and you know, hopefully she'll keep growing in grace, and and you'll keep sharing and being blessed and uh, and being uh, um, a witness to the truth. Amen. In spirit. Um. Yeah. So, um, so, so one of the things I wanted to talk to you about uh, with the coaching and stuff is when it comes to playing the game, there's lots of techniques and little things like that. <clears throat> the game's broken down to offense and defense. The game's also broken down to different positions. There's nine positions on a field. Uh, baseball is played uh, on a 90-degree diamond. They normally call it a diamond or the baseball diamond or the baseball stadium or the baseball field. 
in which they're divided by the fair the the foul lines. The foul lines, the territory is called two types of territory. You have foul territory and you have fair territory. The fair territory is the playing field where most of the action takes place. However, some plays can take place in foul territory. Foul territory is territory that you can still play, but no advancements of runners uh, can take place unless certain stipulation happens. So we love the game of baseball because there's a lot of if-then statements. Just like when um, we were reading about Jacob's Ladder, um, I think it was Fabian was reading about Jacob's Ladder, and I think I talked to you a little about Jacob's Ladder. Um, do you remember, uh, wow. Joseph or Fabian, what uh, what uh, Jacob said to the Lord after he woke up? Oh, we lost someone. Who did we lose? Oh, lost Fabian. Da, 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 da. Oh, decline him. Cambium at. Okay. Give me a second. Or you could... Okay. So Fabian and Jacob. Again, <laughs> Jacob. <laughs> Joseph. Uh, Joseph and Fabian. Do you remember after he that Jacob wakes up from his dream, he anoints the rock and stuff, but he also says something. He says... He gives like a, a statement. Do you do either one of you remember what that statement was? Yeah, I remember. What, what was that statement? Yeah, you want me to say? Yeah. Uh, he, he said, God, if you will go with me and you bring me back to my to my father's house, to my brethren, then you will be my God, then you will be my God, and then I will also give a tenant of everything that I have. Yes. Yes, brother. I was going to say yes, sir, but I forgot. Y'all don't like wow. it. Yes. Yes. It says, then Jacob made a vow saying, if... God will be with me, will will be with me, and will keep me on this journey that I take, and will give me food to eat and garments to wear, and I return to my father's house in safety. Then, the next key word, the Lord will be my God. So we call this if-then statements. In English, we call if-then. If this, then that. If this, then that. If this, then that. The Bible is full of if then then that statements. We love baseball because baseball has a lot of if then statements and it's a great tool to teach children how to think in more than one level or more than one page, more than one layer. It gives you a mind to think sideways is what I say because you have to turn left to see the next if then and you gotta turn right. So what happens is when you learn the game of baseball, there's a lot of rules that say, if this, then that. But if this, then this overrides that. There's a lot of uh, maneuvering that gives you multiple rules that are not written in straight order. But you have to put together pending the situation that is play. So when you have fair territory, you have foul territory, and then you have dead ball territory. Dead ball territory is where nothing can happen. Foul ball territory is where territory that... Uh, very few things can happen, but particularly ties to the batter and the pitcher. Fair ball territory is where everything is going on with all people, depending where the ball goes. So, the line that divides fair from foul territory is called the foul line. <laughs> I don't know why, but it is. It's called foul, even though it's in fair territory. <laughs> so... It's it's one of those little nuances. It's like you you mean I must die. It's like what we had with Fabian the other day. Fabian asked me, "It's difficult to understand Matthew ten thirty four through forty two. What is Jesus trying to tell you that you must die? You must hate your brother or your father, or your mother more than me, Jesus." And he doesn't quite understand it. It's the same thing with baseball. Was like. Why do you call it a foul line if it's in fair territory? You know, shouldn't you call it fair <coughs> a fair line and not a foul line? But regardless, that's the that's the the way it's written. That's the way it is. That's the way it will be. <coughs> Baseball's been around for about 150 plus years. It's probably the oldest, one of the oldest American sports uh, for the most part. Way longer than basketball and definitely longer than football, American at least. 
So, there's a lot of little nuances that makes it very intriguing. Uh, it's just one of those things that you that everyone can play. People love it because you can play at all ages. You don't necessarily have to be good at all ages, but everyone can throw a ball. Everyone can run or walk. You don't have to be fast. You don't have to be big. You don't have to be small. There is someone somewhere in some shape. Every body style that you have, you can play somewhere. So you have nine players on the field. You have the outfielders and you have the infielders. There are, here's another one of those funny things too again. The infield, the bases are normally 90 feet by 90 feet. If they're children, then they're 60 feet by 60 feet. You play on a diamond or a perfect square. So in the infield, you have a pitcher, a catcher, a first baseman, a second baseman, a third baseman, and a shortstop. There are four bases on a baseball field. You have home plate, which is ultimately your goal to touch. But you must, just like Jesus is sitting at what hand? What hand is Jesus sitting at up in heaven? Right, right hand. Guess which way do you have to run after you make contact with a ball that was pitched by the pitcher? Right side. To the right side. Because Jesus is the right hand and we run to the right hand. So first base is to the right. Second base is the next base, third base, and then home plate. So, the the beautiful thing about this is it the players are pretty much named after their bases. So, first baseman will cover first base, second base normally uh, will cover second, along with the shortstop, because there's two sides to that base. And third base will be covered or protected by the third baseman. So, we have... Uh, a pitcher in the center of the diamond who throws the rock, the baseball. And I love the baseball because the baseball, when much like when we use Paul and he takes the armor of soldiers and he uses that as a way to communicate the gospel and the pieces of Christ and the salvation of Christ and to relate to soldiers. Well, we can do that with a baseball too. Um, a baseball is made up of... A couple, two, well, a number of materials, but two that we obviously see. Now, the baseball guys might know the complete answer, but I'll just ask you since you're kind of new, Joseph. Um, a baseball has two colors. What are the two colors on a baseball? White. Uh, uh, mm hmm. It's red. It's red. So, okay. so, so let me ask you a question. Have you ever, uh, have you ever, uh, have you ever touched the baseball? Just curious. Okay. No problem. Dan, next time you see, you forgot to give him a baseball, I take back with him. Sign your name on it. Put a Bible verse on it. Give it away. So, so, so there are a red and white. Now, do you know what a baseball is made of by chance? Not by chance, by grace. By grace. Do you know what a, a baseball is made up of? No, I don't. Dan or Fabian, answer that question. Leather and, uh, and thread. Yes. Like yes. What about the inside? The inside, I've seen that. Uh, it's just like a rubber, hard rubber. Yes. It's called a pill. A rubber pill. A what? A rubber pill. Oh. Yeah, like, like, you, like medication, a pill. The same thing, but a rubber pill. That's why when the pitcher throws, the pitcher throws a baseball. He also throws a pill. He also throws a rock. Those are synonymous terms. Just like Jesus is our rock. Jesus is our physician. Jesus is our lamb of God that takes away the sins of the world. Well, baseball pretty much works the same way. So, it's pretty cool to know that. The reason that we love it is basically... Um, Dan or Fabian, describe a baseball to, uh, Joseph. Hello? Yeah, Fabian. Can you describe a baseball uh, to Joseph physically? The, the baseball, um, I can see that, uh, baseball is, uh, uh when you see baseball, is used with, uh, Outside, it used with uh, you can see two materials. Um, no, uh, white one, white and the other is one is white and the other is red. And uh, white, the white one is caoutchouc. 
how I don't so let me see how they strike out chook in like the like this smell they use for tennis. Yes. Kinda. Is it like is it like this smell they use in tennis? Okay. No, no, no. No, tennis, no. Tennis, yes, in tennis is is not the same. And tennis tennis ball ah. is light. Don't it is ah. not strong like uh this ball on. And okay. Yeah. So, so I'll give you, I'll give you an example to, to help. Dan, can, Dan, are you there? Yes, brother. Tell Joseph, uh, about a, a baseball physically in your words. And, uh, do you remember when we were talking about Rahab and Jericho? Yes, yes, about that, right. Yes, I would relate the red thread that, uh, Right, right, but tell him the baseball first. Wait, 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 hold on, hold on. Tell him about, tell him more about the baseball. Is it like a tennis ball? It's, it's bigger than a tennis ball. I'm not sure about the, 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 the diameter, but slightly bigger than, than a tennis ball. And again, for it, it is being sold. Like, it's, it's, it's just put together. It's not like rubber. For it, uh, it's our part is on rubber. It's leather that is stitched. And the stitch is made by the red thread. Yes. And that's the thread that puts it together. Okay, and so. There's only one thread that moves both. Yeah. Amen. Yes, it is a thread. So, let me, let me pause you right there and then you can tell them in a second. So, so, this game that we love is centered around this ball. Without this ball, we cannot play baseball, much like you can't play other games without a ball. So this relates to all types of sports and events. This ball is much like the arc. So when we studied the arc, the ark was made of what? What was the ark made of? Yes, go for wood. Yes, and the pitch, the pitch, or the 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 gopher the gopher tar pitch. Yeah, the pitch. So it's amazing because we understand that pitch. Basically, you're throwing something on it. You know, it's one of those things. So we learn what the gopher wood represented, right? And we learn what the gopher pitch the the represented, right? Do you remember from class anyone what it meant in that picture of Jesus? Yes, brother Jeff. Very good. Yes, I remember what it said with the brother Jeff photos. What did it mean? Go ahead, tell me. The pitch the the gopher wood represented the cross. Yes. And the pitch represented the blood of Christ. The blood of Christ? You, you said the blood of Christ? Yes. Yes. That's what it was. It was the body and the blood of Christ protecting us. And all those inside of it were protected. So, a baseball is very much the same way. Because, Joseph, the white material that's used, guess what it's made of? Well, they said leather. What is leather made from? It has to be a skin of an animal. Yes, it was a sacrifice. Mm-hmm. So, the red yarn that is used to connect it. So, basically, a baseball is made with two pieces of leather made in a, an identical fashion in a figure eight. And then you put them together. Like, if you have your hands and you, you, you put your hands together, like, like thumb to knuckle and the other thumb your knuckle, it's kind of like that. But to keep it together, there is a string or one piece of yarn or one string, one string of faith of baseball that holds it together, much like the pitch on the arc that stops it from leaking and coming apart or being sunk. It's red. What does red normally mean in the Bible, guys? The blood. Now, the good news is, is when I ask Dan, Dan, ask Joseph how many stitches are on a baseball. The game you love that you need to play that rock. Let me answer before you ask me. I don't know. Oh, no. I know. <laughs> it's a rhetorical question. The answer is when you ask people, 
you ask him, how many stitches do you see? Because when you look at a baseball, you see that the, the pin has gone in and out, in and out, in and out, in and out, holding it together, right? Much like you, you uh, make garments. So when you look at it, you can see stitches. And you can ask him how many stitches there are. There is 108 stitches on two different sides of the baseball. 108 stitches. Now, that's a tiny little fact, just like... Yeah. Inside and out, right? Yeah, in and out, just like a, like it's it's the same thing. We have leather bags. Well, we got leather baseballs, and they all need stitching. They all got to be held together by something because they don't glue together, <laughs> you know. I mean, yeah, we know they glue, but stitching is better. So, so the stitching holds the game, the ball together, holds the rock together so that we can play the game we love. And we're teaching you, hopefully, to love or officiate, you know, stuff like that. But one of those things that other kids love, too. So what happens is, is that there's 108. And there's little pieces of information like this that don't seem like a whole lot. But you know what? How many people were saved when the Holy Spirit was given? At, at Pentecost. Do you remember how many were saved that day? by the When the Spirit came at Pentecost? Exactly! A picture of grace. Yeah. How many people were killed... The day that Moses came down the mountain the first time and broke the Ten Commandments because of the calf that they were worshipping. Maybe they wanted to make baseballs. I don't know. But they shouldn't be worshipping cows. So, baseballs are made out of cow cow leather, so you know. <laughs> so, 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 how many died that day when the law was given? Exactly. Now, brothers... How many were killed the day that Samson enacted judgment on the pagan Philistines? Yes, and you both saw the law in action, and you saw grace in action by that 3,000. In the same way, the 108 stitches is representative of a much deeper concept that we can tie to these children that makes them the game they love to play to tie to Jesus as well. Then... Explain to Joseph how that string and that leather is put together in a way that we can glorify Jesus and share that with the children when they play the game that we love and that we're learning about. Fabian, mute your phone real quick because it's doing that staticky thing again. Just mute your phone for a second. Thank you, brother. Go ahead, Dan. Explain to Joseph now the red string and the baseball and what it's a much bigger picture of to those that love the game of baseball that need to love Jesus. <laughs> uh, if I try to relate it to the rehab story. Yes, that one. Now, uh, yeah. Uh, rehab story, uh, that was in Jericho, right? Yeah. Yeah, Joshua. Yes, Joshua. Uh, the spies, the soldiers that we sent there, uh, had refuge and uh, hid at Rehab's house. And uh, to save them from being arrested, they had to move out through the window. But they used a piece of cloth that was, yeah, I think, piece of cloth that was rain, and that is how they got out for their safety. So the same. Uh, the same with the baseball is the the same red dot and the red uh, the red uh, thread is the same uh, red too. All right. So Joseph, I know you probably know the story of Jericho, correct? This is why we're doing Rahab, not next week, but the following week, because it's going to tie together. We're going to put this string and weave everything into it, because it's Jesus that holds all things together, just like he says, even ourselves. So for the game of baseball, Joseph, what was the color of the rope that they did that, that, that Rahab let the thieves down, uh, and then they came back up, and then the, the, uh, the, the two witnesses uh, commanded her to do if she wanted to live? It was red, 
Exactly. Red, scarlet, crimson, whatever you got in your Bible, red. Bottom line. That red, that red rope was representative of who more so? What was that rope really a picture of? It was a picture of Christ. Yes. Yes. It was her faith in action with the message that the witnesses came to deliver. Ultimately, yes, it's about Jesus. Now, they don't know that fully by Jesus, but they know that they've given a promise that God has promised, and they've shared that promise. That is the good news of the gospel. And in that story, a red rope was used to symbolize the red blood that were covered in the New Testament. In the same way, the Bible's red string is a representative in the same way that we will be saved by faith um, from the grace that God has given to us through his word. And if we believe, then we will do whatever what we do to glorify him in word and in deed. Um, so that baseball is a picture of the body of Christ, the sacrifice that was given, and the blood that was that the blood that ties all of us together to our Lord and to our Savior, that keeps the pill on the inside <laughs> that that's there as a picture of us being inside of the Lord in the game that we love because we love our Lord and and because of that reason we glorify the Lord in all things that we do. When you look at the rest of the baseball a baseball is made up of, I don't remember how many feet, but I know it's hundreds of feet of yarn. And that ball on the inside of leather, well, it's not meat on the inside because we eat the meat of the calf. So we use yarn, a string, a string of faith that is wrapped around hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of times to finally get to the right size of a nine-inch circumference that weighs five to five and a quarter ounces. That is what a baseball is. It is from nine to nine and a quarter inches in circumference, three inches wide, and five to five and a quarter ounces in weight. All baseballs in the world are the same, generally speaking. They're like Bibles. Pretty much they're all the same unless they start changing out the leather and putting plastic and going cheap and, you know, other stuff. Kind of like what they do to the Bible. You know what I mean? So, so that rock is a picture of our Lord. So when I hear the, the people say, the pitcher say, I'm throwing the rock, now usually they share it in an arrogant way. But once they know Jesus, they say, look, even though I know you're saying that word rock, uh, you know, Rocks usually are meant to kill. Well, rocks are also used to build things and throw stuff. Well, you know what? You keep throwing Jesus there, and you'll be surprised that if you keep glorifying him, that rock you throw, that baseball you throw, that pill that you throw, you know, he will take you places you won't know. But if you give it to him and see it, whatever you go, glorify him in that game. 108 stitches, 9 inches in circumference, 5 ounces in weight, and three inches in diameter. By the way, this will also teach you how the strike zone is and how wide it is. So I'll finish with the strike zone. Home plate is the most important spot that everything is centered around. Because home plate is how many inches in width? Anyone? Come on, baseball coaches. Yes, go ahead. Go ahead, Joseph. It is at the point of the diamond of the of the fair territory. So everything revolves around home plate. But go ahead, Dan. Go ahead. No. Go ahead, Dan. Go ahead. Seventeen inches. Yes, seventeen inches. Is that what you said? Yes. Seventeen inches. So all play takes place at home plate. There's a catcher there. The umpire is there. The part I love the most now. The batter is there. And the pitcher stand, stands in the center of the diamond. And he throws the ball to home plate over trying to get the batter out at the strike zone. You've seen cricket, right? Yeah. In cricket, home plate would be like the sticks. Yeah. Yeah. Instead of... Uh, Instead of sticks, you'll find home plate. But the catcher is there. 
That is the second most, uh, well, you know, it, it's up for interpretation and debate. The catcher receives a ball from the pitcher. And why we love baseball, because when a catcher and a pitcher, without a catcher and without a pitcher, you, you really can't play the game of baseball. It's meant to play with other people. It's like the father and the son. The father, the son loves his father because when he teaches him to play baseball, they fall in love because they can share in something that they don't touch entirely, but they can throw and share and they can exercise and work out and talk about things. And it's just fun to do stuff like that. Much like people find it fun to walk, other people don't sometimes, but some do, you know. It's a great way to have a great experience with a father and a son. Uh, you know, normally a mother and daughter too, but I'm not real too crazy about that. But it works. So mother and daughter, hopefully, father, son, father, daughter, it works. So um, it's a it's a it's a great thing to share in the game that you love, and you can't really play the game by yourself, and that's why you need others, just like Christians. You can't really be by yourself because when I sent my PNP yesterday, I don't know if you all read it, the, the picture, um, that is a Christian that is struggling because he doesn't go to a church, he doesn't share with other people, and he doesn't like to be corrected, and he kind of likes to do his own thing. If you saw my PNP, you'll notice that he was sharing a message with a BSF group, and he said some things that were off. And it forced me to have to respond to him in a loving way, but in a stern way. Okay, hold on. We lost Joseph. Da, da, da. Okay, anyway. So you could take a look at that stuff. But anyway, so going back to home plate, finishing with baseball because we're out of time. Uh, home plate is a kind of like a square triangle. Um, of, let's see. One, two, three. A five-sided uh, shape that takes place at home where the strike zone is the zone that is above that area in which the ball must touch the strike zone for it to be a strike, like the video said, or the batter can swing at it and strike himself out as well. So, with that being said, home plate is 17 inches wide by 12 by, I think, like 10. Uh, it's a five-sided uh, object. Uh-oh, who do we lose? Uh, okay, so anyway, home plate is 17 inches wide, and the reason I say that is home plate is the same width between is the same width between people missing heaven from hell. Joseph, how many people miss heaven because the message of the gospel, the good news, the Romans message, the John message, the message of the Bible stops at their head and never gets to their heart? How many people miss life that way? Quite many. Guess how many inches between your head and your heart is? The size of home plate. 17 inches on average. Yeah. You miss home by 17 inches. Yeah. It's the distance between your brain and your heart. About 17 inches. The size of home plate. And you're struck out. <laughs> yeah. So, so we love this game because there's so many ways. And you get three strikes as a pitcher before you're struck out. So you get more than one chance. You know, God is a God of many chances. You know? So we love him for that. Just like in baseball, you get three chances. So three and out. The Trinity, three. All over the place. You'll get three a lot of times. And then after that, it's like, oh, sorry, bro. Next. <laughs> This game, this game might have come from heaven. I, it is a. Let, let me give you one. When we read the umpire book on Tuesday, we're gonna read that the that from the umpire world, the judge world, not the player world, not the coach world. You're gonna find out that the home plate has ultimate. The home plate umpire, there can be one, two, three, four, five. Uh, up to six in the pros, normally up to four in amateur. But normally there's two umpires that officiate a game or umpire a game. Umpire is a Bible word that comes from Colossians 3.15. It says, let the, let the heart of, let the, oh man, what is, let the word of Christ rule your heart. Or, in English, umpire your heart. So, an umpire, when you read the rules of an umpire, or the description of an umpire, you're going to read in there that basically it says the umpires have a chief umpire. The home plate umpire is the UIC or umpire-in-chief. 
So when you do your homework this weekend and make up for the day the other day, because no, you know, so you can take off that negative one dollar and you make up this weekend, make sure you go do it before Sunday. You'll you'll kind of maybe read that and stuff where it says the umpire in chief is the home plate umpire. He's in charge and has final authorities over all decisions. However, he is helped by the base umpire. The base umpire has equal authority to the home plate umpire, but he is not above the home plate umpire, but he has equal authority and has the ability to make the same decisions as well. However, he is not above the father, but he is, but it's like what Ephesians says, uh, equality with God is not something easy to grasp. But somehow we seem to understand that in the baseball world. Because the base umpire has equal authority to the home plate umpire, but he is not greater than the umpire, the home plate umpire. Just like the son is equal to the father, but he is not above, no servant is above the master, and he is not above the father, like Jesus says in his own words. So we love this game when you start actually knowing the details about it, and you're like, oh wow, there's so much that you can share during the game that we love. But anyway, you know what? Yeah, uh, it is it is a great thing. But anyway, uh, so we're out of time. And I want to thank you for this opportunity to finish up. That was a great sermon earlier. If you have questions about homework, just let me know. Don't forget to go back and make up Umpire School is real easy. and gave you a questionnaire or, you know, just a fill in the blank. Read it, fill in the question so you can have that little bit of knowledge in there. You know, like the little 3,000 or maybe the 3,000 here, the 3,000 there. You know, little things like that. Uh, do you all have any questions or any comments before we uh, leave and Fabian closes us out? No? Three, two, one. All right, Fabian, close us out. Okay. Okay. Uh, we are praying. My Lord, we thank you for this day that uh, you allow us to join and extend one more time about, about your word. And we thank you because during this conversation, you show us that there are all things we come from your, from you because Amen. show us that baseball is your mind. It is you who give uh, opportunity to to us to make baseball. It is you who give us the power to make baseball game because there are a lot of things who are in your in the book of in the book of life and who are also in a baseball game. So Father Lord, we thank you for this game because I don't know if there is some other game who are the same like baseball. So we thank you very much for this one. Father Lord we always thank you for this day because you renew the breath of your child, Noah, who have his birthday today. And we celebrate it uh, by, the, uh, by your prayer with the book of life. And we thank you for having him many years in the ground so that when he will grow, we have to we have to share, to share your word with another people as we are doing right now in our Bible group. Father Lord, praise you to help our mother to beg you to give her a, a many years again because our mother is our gift. She also has a lot of things to show us so that we can continue to walk in the light. <coughs> Father Lord, praise you and we beg you <coughs> to give help to our brother Cruz so that he could, he, he could return to his job and 
Let's get back uh, strong for the Lord. Bless you to help our mother, my big sister, mother in law, who is now there for your help every day. So every day we pass for the Lord. Watch you to keep our countries in a peace. Amen. Father, we want you to continue to glorify us so that uh, during our uh, uh, school period, we, we cross it very well and we be strong in, uh, in, in your faith in church for you and uh, with other people, other people who are still in the dark. Because our job right now here is for bring them to the light. But a lot <clears throat> want you to continue to put in our sight those who are still in the dark. Because our mission is to bring them in the right way. <clears throat> but a lot, you know that you are the Alpha and Omega. You are the beginning and the end. You are the, the, the whole thing in the world for the Lord. That's why we have to praise you every day, everywhere. And we, are, we have to continue to work as you direct us for the Lord. The magic name of Jesus we pray. Amen. 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 All right. Well, that will conclude this. Yep. Amen. Go ahead. Go ahead, Dan. May I thank you, brother, for the prayer. Yes. Amen. All right. Well, that will conclude this class. I'm going to hit the end button right now. And thank you for listening and participating. Amen. And God be with you today.